A year ago, I was on a family trip with my parents and cousin. It was last summer. It was very hot, but I tried to ignore it. We had to drive for about an hour deep into the woods. At the time, many children were in youth camp, but many people were also lounging in their vacation homes. It was a peaceful and very welcoming community. There was even a small little shop. In the night, it wasn't as welcoming. You see, the youth group would spend half of the night walking around in the woods singing songs. That already sounds creepy enough. This made the people who were trying to sleep in their cabins really mad. No one said anything, however, as they tried to keep the community peaceful. We were in the middle of the woods after all, so if something happened, then we would be able to be civil and calm with each other while the situation was being dealt with. Me and my cousin found the singing creepy more than anything. Since we didn't really sleep at night anyway, we would mostly tell each other ghost stories to set the mood. It was fun. Yet it also resulted in me and my cousin being too scared to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. The cabin itself was really weird. Sure, we had a bathroom and a kitchen, yet it just didn't seem right, like there was something off. I blamed that on us telling stories though, until it was the third night, our second to last night there. It was Wednesday night and we would be leaving on Friday. Me and my cousin were doing our thing, telling each other about our ghost experiences. We both believe in that stuff, as my grandma's house is most likely haunted. We would have sleepovers all the time and weird things would happen, but that's a story for another day. It was around 1am when it all began. There were two windows in our room, one facing a path and one facing the front yard of the cabin. We had both agreed on covering up the window facing the front as we were both paranoid that someone or something would stand there and stare at us. There was no need to cover up the other one as there were blinds. Anyways. We were staring out of the window, waiting for the youth group to walk by, singing the night away and annoying everyone else. We were also chatting in the process about what we usually chat about. It was fairly peaceful, surprisingly. An hour goes by, still no youth group. We thought that maybe they were eating or something, or maybe they took a different route through the dark forest. That was until we caught a glimpse of what looked like one of the leaders. You couldn't really tell who it was because it was dark yet we had expected it was them because who else would be walking around a forest at night. We had to pull the blinds up, bracing ourselves for loud voices to be heard. Seconds passed in silence. Nothing. It was strange to say the least. We looked at each other in confusion and my cousin joked that it would be funny if they noticed how we were peering through the window at them. She thought it was funny. I didn't. Normally, I only take these types of things seriously when it actually scares me. No sound left my mouth and I just looked through the window. My cousin awkwardly stopped laughing and did what I did. Then, the youth leader stopped. What the hell are they doing? I asked quietly. My cousin slowly replied with, I don't know, maybe they're waiting for someone to catch up with them. That's when I noticed that before they were at a painfully slow pace, almost as if they didn't have a very good knowledge of the area and were very confused on where they were going. My cousin gulped and took out her phone. She turned on the flash and began to slowly open the window. I was terrified at this point. Opening the window when a mysterious person is in sight surely wasn't a good idea. I held her wrist. What are you doing? This is very dangerous. She replied, We won't know who it is unless we see for ourselves. I was confused. Why would we want to know? She slowly opened the window and shined her light through the gap. She was careful and made sure that the figure couldn't see who was shining it. Once the light hit the dark silhouette, we both gasped quietly. It was the strangest, yet scariest thing we had ever seen. The figure wasn't a group leader, it was a woman. She was wearing a long white gown and had long dark hair. It didn't cover her face, it was laying comfortably on her shoulders. It was also curly, yet not the type of neat curly. It was more like it had been swaying in the wind and it was messed up. All knotty. The white gown was not neat either. It was covered in dirt and had patches of it missing. Dark brown lines outlining the missing fabric, the patches were burnt off. We didn't even catch a glimpse of her face. Her chest was moving up and down at an unrealistic pace, as if she was running from somewhere. We both gulped again and my cousin finally built up the courage to shine the light on her face. We were preparing for it, yet we couldn't prepare ourselves for what we would see next. The light was brought up to her face. She had pale skin, Yet there were multiple burn marks present, 
especially two big patches of brown, almost charcoal black burns. Blood was dripping just ever so slightly from them. One was on her right cheek and one was on the right side of her forehead. Her arms were covered in them as well. It wasn't just those burn marks however, she had bruises all over her body, as if she had fallen. The scariest part about it all was yet to come, and it was something we hadn't expected ever. Her chest stopped moving. Her head began to move to the right, our direction. We were frozen in fear and I whispered, Turn the goddamn light off. Yet my cousin didn't move even a centimetre. She was completely frozen. The woman had now finally turned towards us. We both gasped as we caught a sign of her face and eyes. The eyes were a milky white. Her pupils seemed to have never existed. Yet that wasn't the worst part. The other half of her face was covered in blood. It was all dripping down her neck and into her gown, ruining it even more. Underneath the blood was more burns and different scars. That sight will never leave my mind as her soulless eyes stirred into ours. At this point, turning off the lights seemed to have been the best idea. As if we had turned it off, we would have lost sight of the woman and she might have been approaching us without our knowledge. We were right. She was approaching us. At first, I thought she had been in an accident and was seeking help. Yet those milky white eyes made me think otherwise. Still, she was slowly walking towards us. We couldn't even hear the grass beneath her feet. That was another detail. She wasn't wearing shoes. A fence surrounds the cabin, making sure that no animals get through. Yet the gate was at the front side of the cabin, but we were near the back. The window faced the side, giving us a clear view of the path, which is where the woman was standing. She wasn't floating like a ghost was in everyone's account yet she was walking. That made us think more that it was a victim of some accident. We were still frozen with fear. I was shaking as if there was an earthquake. My cousin was in the same state. Then the woman reached the fence. She stopped and looked down, realizing that the obstacle was there. She then looked up and simply walked through it. That was when me and my cousin started to really freak out. We caught a last glimpse of the woman right after she seemingly walked through an object. Her arms were stretched out and she held out her hand as if she was expecting for one of us to pull her through the window. Yet just as she held it out, she disappeared into thin air, evaporating right then and there. Me and my cousin let out a huge sigh, only then noticing that we were holding our breaths the entire time. We locked the window and let the blinds down. I quickly got up and turned the light on. I lay down on the bed and stopped shaking. We were both sweating and let out another huge sigh of relief. What the hell was that? She said. I don't know, but did you see when she evaporated? My cousin nodded, and we looked out of the window one last time, to then see the youth group marching, singing the night away just as we thought they'd do. We didn't sleep that night out of fear that that woman would return. The next morning, we both stayed in our rooms until our parents woke up. We had gone outside for breakfast. That day was particularly hot. As we ate our breakfast, my dad mentioned that he thought he saw a woman outside but he thought it was just the youth group leader. Me and my cousin looked at each other. I began talking. Dad, um, I don't know if you're believers by now, but there was a woman outside and she wasn't a group leader. What do you mean? My mum asked. Well, we were waiting for the youth group leader last night and she was there, but she looked like she had been in an accident involving fire. Her body and clothes were burnt. Her eyes were completely white and she managed to walk through the fence towards our window but we closed it just in time. It sent a shiver down my spine just thinking about it all. My mum seemed to roll her eyes at us. You were dreaming. No, mum, we're being serious. We didn't sleep the entire night because of it. You were probably sleep deprived. It was true. We didn't get the best sleep the night before. Maybe it was just our very vivid imagination. All that storytelling could have put the image into our head. We had finished breakfast quickly and we were heading to the lake to swim. We got dressed into our swimming suits and grabbed the necessities. At this point, me and my cousin had seemed to forget about it, the emotions being overpowered by the excitement of getting to swim and relax for a few hours. We both went first, the adults following a little far behind. My cousin stopped as we passed our window, a look of shock and terror visible on her face. Are you okay? I asked slowly. She didn't say anything and pointed to the sand below our feet. Footprints were clearly visible in the sand. I called over my mum and she walked over. This is where we saw her. She walked to the fence and walked straight through it. It was probably someone who was part of the youth group and dropped something here. 
Don't be ridiculous. I don't even know why Mum has to make up excuses at this point. The footprints were right there. Coincidentally, leading to where we saw her walking. It was too much to take in. We both slowly forgot about it all and went to swim. Ten minutes passed and I needed to get out for a bit as I got water in my eye and it stung. We realised that we needed to get a few extra towels so me and my cousin volunteered. We went back, being cautious. Then my cousin stopped again, this time being even more paranoid. I decided to tell her, look, what if we did imagine it all? Maybe my mum was right. Look, she pointed at our window. On the ground, there were a few pieces of white fabric and seemingly pieces of charcoal below our window. The fabric had burn marks along the circumference, yet the pieces of charcoal had seemed to be way smaller. Then it clicked. That woman's face was surely falling apart. She had been burnt until her skin turned a charcoal black. We quickly ran into the cabin and took the towels, locking the door. We had then spent the rest of the afternoon outside. Once we left the cabin, I told my dad all about what we saw. He was a little skeptical at first, until I had explained it all in details. From that day on, I had told my cousin and my dad everything about what I experienced in terms of the paranormal. My mum has, and probably will, never believe me, but I try to forget it. However, that woman's face will unfortunately never leave my mind. We are luckily not going to the cabin this year, but we are going to a different vacation home. I have also decided to not research about it all. I would much rather believe that the woman just passed away from an accident. The possibility that she was murdered by someone who committed arson scares me more. I'm more paranoid, and I'm definitely scared of forests now.